Alaska's Arctic is one of the most remote areas of the U.S. It's also a region that has been particularly ravaged by the coronavirus. Now the help they need to recover is flying to the rescue. Fort Yukon is providing vaccinations to surrounding villages and aid workers can only access the areas by plane or by snowmobile. In fact, Alaska is currently vaccinating at a faster rate than any other state in the U.S. How is this possible? There aren't any doctors in Fort Yukon, but there is Deborah McCarty, the health center's director. She's responsible for the area's 500 residents who have to forego a lot. Snow slopes instead of asphalt roads, no pubs, no restaurants, no fast internet. This is what normality looks like eight miles north of the Arctic Circle. I think for most people, actually, life up here is pretty slow. Um, I mean, people work hard. You know, everybody has to get wood. Everybody has goes hunting. Everybody goes fishing. Most people have gardens. It's a close-knit, small community. I mean, it's like we, we're related to almost everybody. It's of course not like that. Where, you know, if you're going to live, if you live someplace else or in a city or even just a bigger town, that is accessible by road. You know, we're we're sort of on an island here, and everybody is very close. This is one reason why the virus has claimed four times as many indigenous lives in Alaska compared to urban whites. Deborah has a lot on her mind when she goes to the health center every morning, namely how to protect people here from the virus as quickly as possible. It's been a few weeks since vaccinations opened up to everyone over the age of 16, much earlier than in most other states. Same-day appointments are available without waiting. Um, sure. So your arm might be a little bit sore. Um, some people have more soreness than others. So I usually just tell people, um, pick the arm that you don't, re don't really need to use today. I'll use this one. Okay. Deborah and her team have already immunized more than half of the village. Concerned about high death rates, the health center received the vaccine from the U.S. government and the Indigenous Health Insurance Fund. Now there are vaccine doses in abundance. That's it. It's amazing. We have a couple hundred doses. We've um, pretty much finished after the charter tomorrow. Um, we will be finished with the villages and then we just have to finish Fort Yukon. So, and we didn't think we would be able to do this till the summer, you know, get everybody done. Deborah takes us to her home, a small wooden house on the outskirts of town. People here are content living without much. Deborah has already seen much of the world. The daughter of a white father and an indigenous mother, she lived in Germany for several years when her father served in the army, but Fort Yukon has always been her home. When the first COVID cases broke out, it was easy for Deborah to shield herself from the rest of the world because she lives alone with her son. But for most families, quarantining is almost impossible because they live in small homes and the virus spreads rapidly. It was pretty scary for, for everybody. It was kind of a, a really big unknown. You know, how bad is it going to get here? People were thinking, oh, my, you know, the grandmas and grandpas thinking, oh, this is going to be like 1918 and it's going to wipe out whole villages. So that's kind of what everybody was preparing for. So, of course, people were scared. The kids were scared. We were worried at the clinic, you know, we don't have ventilators. If somebody needs oxygen or CPR, what are we going to do? 
there was a lot of preparation going into it. Vaccination day has arrived. The team is making the final preparations before a round trip to the villages. Nurse Kimberly Anden is carrying 50 doses of the Moderna vaccine in her luggage, and she hopes that this will bring the state of emergency to an end. One person gets it here, that's, you know, that's 5% of the population almost. So that one household pretty much can cause for the whole village to shut down. That means nobody hauling water, nobody hauling fuel, nobody, you know, you're not leaving your house to go get stuff that you need. Okay, it's going to take us about uh, 20 minutes over to Vinatai, 25 minutes. The flights are expensive and time-consuming, so the team tries to vaccinate as many people as possible on a single trip. The eight workers who come today won't return for four more weeks. This is another reason why, even with many villages situated in the middle of the wilderness, Alaska is the fastest state when it comes to vaccinating residents in the U.S. They are approaching Vinatai on the banks of the Yukon. There's hardly any infrastructure, no cell phone network, no supermarket, and most importantly, no road access. The Yukon is the lifeline for villages in the Arctic. In the summer, it provides salmon, upon which many residents here depend. In the winter, it resembles an ice desert. A snow slope serves as landing strip. There are two cars in the village, and one of them is the ambulance. In the winter, the snowmobile is the most important means of transportation. It's just a short ride up to the health center. Food, fuel, clothes, everything has to be flown in here. Today, it's the vaccine's turn to be airborne. Twenty villagers are already waiting inside. Word has spread about how dangerous the virus is here too. So no one in Binatai needs to be convinced about being vaccinated. Hi. Did you guys read the brochure thing about yeah, Moderna? Yes, okay. Yes. You know you're gonna get some side effects. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> yes, you are. We've been anticipating to get our first shot, and we are so happy to finally get it, and we thought it's going to, you know, hurt, but nada, no pain. Take me a picture. For them, the vaccination marks the end of a long period of isolation, finally meeting friends again, finally partying okay. again. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> okay. After the shot, a sticker involved. and some warm words. Here you go. Congratulations, ladies. Hi, go ahead and have a seat. Lawrence Roberts you? is next. Like most in the village, he belongs to the indigenous Gwich'in tribe. Okay. Did you read the information sheet? For many years, he's relied on his strong constitution, but in time of the pandemic, he wants to play it safe. After all, there aren't any doctors or ventilators in Vinatai either. You are done. I will see you in four weeks. Okay. Well, it is pretty important. I mean, well, from what I learned, you know, the... You wouldn't have to get sick or, you know, if it will prevent hospitalization, that's good, you know. Here I come. Lawrence takes us to his home. 
We use his quad bike to get to the edge of the forest of the 200-person village. There are no roads here. During winter, you drive on a snow slope and in summer, on a meadow. He lives alone in a log cabin with his son. For the past year, he hasn't been allowed to leave the village. The tribal government imposed strict rules to protect the community from the virus. Lawrence Roberts says that the modern lifestyle is what makes people so vulnerable to the pandemic. How I grew up, we don't have no con outside contact. I mean, we're, all we're doing is just basically traveling with dog packs and to here and there. And my grandpa would shoot moose or something, and that's where we settled down for a month. And we were, you know, and, and dry the meat. That's basically what it is. And, and it took me when I listened to the year, and uh, I didn't come out of there until I was 10, 10 years old. It was much healthier lifestyle, you know, that, that, that I knew, that I experienced. Never get sick, and when you're out in the woods, you don't get sick at all. Back in Fort Yukon, the village has come together at the traditional spring carnival for the first time since the pandemic began. There hasn't been a COVID case here for two months. The coronation of the princess is one of the year's highlights. Up until recently, Deborah McCarty would not have expected to see this much normality. Even the sled dogs are racing again this year. I feel very fortunate. I mean, we hear about other places that are, don't even have all of their health care providers vaccinated yet, and we were all vaccinated in, in December. For the most part, I think the majority of us and everybody here and in the other villages feel like it's the beginning of the end. By summer, life in the rest of the U.S. will be as carefree as it is in the villages in Alaska's Arctic Circle.